hey, play a song? What? what? I don't know. Song? What song? Dun, 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 your, your theme song. Or does it has it already rolled by this time? That will have already played by now. Ah, I thought we were going to sit and listen to it. No. I was excited. All right. Hey, this is Dave Pryor. Welcome to the Reluctant Agilist. Chris Lee's back. Say hi to everyone, Chris. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So before you watch this podcast, we're going to talk all about sprint planning. You're going to know everything about how to do it in multiple different ways. So if you're at all confused, we're going to fix that nonsense. But there's a couple things you need to know. One, Chris and I are both good friends. We're amped up. We don't. We, we often don't agree. And when we don't, sometimes it sounds like we're arguing. But we're not really arguing. We're just passionate and debating. <laughs> um, we also would like to, before I introduce Chris, I want to go over a couple basic assumptions, some safety rules. Chris has asked me to review and make sure everyone complies with this. We assume that you've at least read the Scrum Guide. We assume that you sort of understand the Scrum Guide. We mm -hmm. assume you know what a product backlog is, what a product is, and what a product goal is. And most importantly, especially for all your JIRA users, you understand the difference between a backlog item and a task. And, oh, I forgot one. Did you understand the difference between sprint planning and backlog refinement? That was there the you go. one. Okay. Was like the I get everything line. there? I, like the, I, I think that, from what we were talking about before, I think that'll... That puts so it off the, the stage. Right. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that the majority of our users who are used to hearing us talk, thank that's you for coming back. But my guess is that almost everyone says, yeah, got it. All right, cool. Rock okay. So, so season six. before we start, do you want to plug Spark Plug real quick and tell these I, people who you are? I absolutely can. For new listeners, uh, if you've been listening to Dave for a while, you already know he's amazing. Um, and there's a lot of great co topics and guests and fun things and music. And Dave was right in the fact that whatever we talk about, it seems that whatever I like, he likes the other half. Like if you look at a, at a shelf full of records, 50% of them Dave hates. And that's probably the 50% that I absolutely would buy and vice versa. And that's yep. kind of how it works. Um, I'm lucky enough to work for an organization called Spark Plug Agility. Uh, there's kind of four major areas that we focus in on speaking engagements like keynotes and MCs stuff and podcasts, stuff like that. Real fun. Uh, professional coaching services. Take the word agile off of it. Sometimes you need an advocate, you know, in your corner to help you discover your goals. Love doing that kind of stuff. Consulting uh, from anything from uh, helping from pipeline. By the way, shout out to our listeners out there who might have been in, uh, impacted by the recent layoffs across so many industries. Hearts go out to you. Hope everything's going to be OK. You know, sunny days are ahead. Uh, Training is what the phone rings for, for most of it. Uh, we really love doing a mixture of learning experiences across a whole bunch of different things, agile related, but the education stuff is what gets us the most excited, uh, working with aspiring and practicing instructors. So if you wanted to check us out, please feel free to take a look at sparkplugagility.com. Uh, I'm out there on social media a lot, just uh, real Chris Lee. You can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, all that good stuff, and uh, love to hear from you. All right. Thank you. I'll be running little stuff on the bottom of the screen the whole time. We're going to go over that again at the end. But now we're going to talk about sprint planning. So a lot of people are super confused about sprint planning. Not really sure why, but they are yeah. coming to our classes. They have all kinds of bizarro misconceptions about when it happens, what happens. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through it. I'm going to go through the way I go through it. And then Chris is going to have at my explanation. Um and we might get into it. We'll see what happens. You know, we'll see how it goes. But but this is not built as a fight. We're not going to. No, argue but everybody. the thing is, we both do this differently and we teach it differently. And Roger that. when we talked about how we teach it differently, that was the thing where I was like, oh, damn, we should really talk about this because yeah, good point. Good point. there are many ways to skin this cat. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So sprint planning is the first thing that happens in every sprint. There is no before. You know, the sprint began when you're in sprint planning. There are three topics that are covered in this meeting, and I cover them in the order in which they're explained in the Scrum Guide, which Chris does not. No, uh, I do. Okay. The why, the what, and the how. So I expect- You talk about you, my friend. You talk about I you. will. All right. I apologize. <laughs> uh, I, I hope that my PO shows up with uh, a reason. Like the example that I like to use in class is like it's somebody's birthday. So the PO shows up and says, we want to produce all the stuff we need to make sure that this person has an awesome birthday. And hopefully the things the PO wants in order to make sure there's an awesome birthday are things we've already talked about previously as a team in product backlog refinement. So most of these things, most of the time are gonna have been estimated. We'll have talked about acceptance criteria, all that. Um, but the why is really important because when we get to the end of the sprint, 
We have to be able to tell the stakeholders this is the outcome we are looking for. And if we ever realize during this sprint, oh my gosh, we have too much work, the why helps us figure out where the red shirts are on the away mission, <laughs> right? Where's Edson Jones and Edson Williams who aren't going to make it back from the planet's surface because we just didn't have enough time. What if they have no idea what a red shirt is, Dave? Then that's not my fault. There you go. Go watch Star Trek. Google. Use Google. Oh, so I was going to say use Google. A red shirt Google. from Star Trek is somebody that gets sent on the away mission that won't return. So you might plan a sprint and realize you can't finish everything, and the sprinkle will help you figure out, okay, if I can't have everything, can I still meet the goal even if I don't do this? And that's something you would talk to the PO about and figure out how to deal with. So we understand why. And now, one by one, the product owner is going to review the backlog items with the development team, which, again, they've probably seen all these things before, but they're going to go through them one more time. And they're going to ask additional questions, validate their story point estimate, make sure they feel comfortable with it, um, until the point where the team says to the PO, dude, that's enough. And at that point, the PO could respectfully challenge it, but to, they could do so with the understanding that it's the team's job to say, like, this is enough. And they have to respect that. Now, the sprint planning meeting is not over because that's the what, right? We have the why are we running the sprint? What are we going to produce? So maybe the product owner says, we want all the stuff we need for an awesome birthday. What does that mean? We need a, a chocolate cake. We need a magician. We need a pony. We need a monkey that can juggle flaming chainsaws, right? And so... In the third part of the meeting, the team discusses how they're going to produce these things. So they often will come up with a list of tasks that, when completed, will deliver the thing. So if I say I want a chocolate <coughs> cake, that would be the product backlog item we talked about earlier that we're going to Excuse deliver. Me. The task could be drive to the supermarket, buy the ingredients, drive back home, mix the ingredients, whatever, whatever, whatever. The tasks are the teams to worry about, right? So if they want to change, they want to decide they want to order the cake and have Instacart deliver it, that's fine. As long as there's a cake at the end, that's what they're going to be committing to. For the product owner, what matters is I have a goal, to all the things we need for the awesome birthday party, and these are the things that will be produced to serve that goal. They're going to be sharing that expectation with the stakeholders. In the third part of the meeting, where the team is tasking out the work, when I'm working with teams, we task it out, and then they estimate all the tasks in ideal hours. So, like, if there's a task Chris could do in an hour, at me, it would take three hours. We don't know who's going to get to do it because we're not assigning work in sprint planning. I'm going to say that again. We are not assigning work in sprint planning. Uh, we're just cutting a slice of capacity off of our pie and setting it aside. Right. We make a responsible choice with that. So we task all the work out. We total up the number of task hours. And if that seems reasonable, then the team could make the commitment. Um, two variations on that, two different extremes, and then I'm going to let Chris take over. So a friend of ours, Troy Lightfoot, has a story about a team. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> if he's listening. Hello, out. Troy. Um, smashing pumpkins. Mm. Anyway. Uh. Eh, um, I know, right? He had a team that didn't task anything out. They were that high performing and that good. So they would just say, okay, cake, magician, pony, done. And they would commit. We forecast these items will be releasable. That commitment is shared with the stakeholders. Off to work. Um, I've had the opposite extreme of that. I've had teams that even when we task out the work and we estimate the tasks and hours, still totally blow the commitment because they don't understand what their actual capacity for work is. So in my class, I have a calculator I built that I teach the people in the class how to use. And team members can use that to figure out how many hours of, of time they have, then they could actually do work. And what typically happens is somebody will come in and say like, oh, I could do 70 hours of work in the next two weeks. And by the time they finish the calculator, they're like, oh, I meant 12. Um, because they're just not thinking about taking out for the scrum meetings and all the other stuff that gets in the way. So they would complete the capacity calculator, total up the number of hours of capacity and compare that to the total number of task hours. So when I'm doing it, the three ways of checking and over committing are, is it seemed like too many story points at the product backlog item level? 
Does it seem like too many task hours at the task level? Do we have enough capacity to do all this work? So that's how I tend to go through it. And I know, Chris, you do some of this differently. So I'm going to be quiet now. I'm going to call no way on that. I have a feeling that you're going to be like, hang yeah, on while you, re- while, while, you make me sit, while, while you make me sit here, sit here and smile and nod. I'll just do and, spit and takes. Yeah, you you're can do that. Me. No, it's fine. All over the microphone. There's that. Well, before you get into it, I think it's important for us to tell people that they are not required to use anything that they're hearing from us. No, you do this however you want to do it. As long as you just... don't do sprint planning before the sprint starts. Please, because that's, yeah, that's a big thing. Kneecapable offense. So, so upsetting. Uh, bringing it back to, and Dave's a cool, go for a little bit and throw it back and forth. You no, saw. you go. Okay, okay. Uh, bringing it back to how Dave uh, had mentioned before, you might want to go ahead and pull up the Scrum Guide. If you don't already have it, it might be handy to have it there. Just Not just when you're listening to this or listening to it again, but just to, to key off of a couple things. And David mentioned before those three topics. And there's an interesting line in the first topic, and I want to talk about that one first, because this is all about why is this sprint valuable to our stakeholders? The time we're spending, what's the reason we're all coming together for this one month or less? That's one way I like to talk about it. An interesting distinction I really like to to mention is that while the product owner walks in, a common misconception is that people believe the product owner writes the sprint goal. This is factually incorrect. They might walk in and make a proposition of how things Yeah, You just go ahead and cough on that for a little bit because, like, yeah. They actually don't write the sprint goal because the entire team would collaborate on what this statement would look like. And a lot of teams have a lot of challenge with this because they go, oh, it's topic one, so we have to write this. And it's like, well, why is this sprint valuable to our stakeholders? If we don't know what it is, it's kind of like a chicken and an egg thing. Well, there's a line that you'll notice that says that the sprint goal must be finalized prior to the end of sprint planning. Mm -hmm. This gives you the out here. And the reason why, and, and one th- shout out to Dave, what he mentioned before is that knock on wood, if a product owner shows up to this particular event, having had the conversations with the rest of the scrum team, primarily developers. And as a reminder, folks, developers does not mean just the coders. That's anyone committed to creating any aspect of that usable increment. These are testers, analysts, you name it. If you're like, wait, huh? it's not just, huh? again, assumptions that you've read the guide. Assuming they come in with an understanding of what those items are. Topic two is the, what can be done? What are those items? And the way we like to talk about it in, in, in the clients and, and the environments that I've been in is that conversation is actually how things can kind of kick off because a product owner would kind of lay their cards on the table. We say they would make a suggestion. Here are a set of items. And you know, a lot of people are like, why can't they just pull off the top of the product backlog? How many of you have worked with a product owner that actually functions in the exact way that Dave or I would show you? Probably not. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. We like to make it collaborative. So a product owner might lay their cards on a table. They make a suggestion. These are backlog items that have been talked about in backlog refinement two, three, four, five, ten times. No surprises. And again, back to the beginning, backlog items are not tasks or subtasks. These are higher level outcome based things, statements, value. So the cards are laid on the table. That's the suggestion. Developers then, they make a selection of those items that are going to be included in this sprint. It's not, and, and Dave, I'm just going to have to speak to this and, and so yeah. on this one. The product owner is not pushing the work on develop. Developers are actually right. selecting the work. They are the ones who get to determine these are the product backlog items that are going to included in this sprint and get turned in a useful collective work product called an increment. This idea of suggest and select, I'll tell you this right now, Scrum Masters, this is where that back and forth and negotiation will happen. Hey, here's eight things. If you're a product owner, listen to this. If the team normally only grabs about eight items, 10 items, don't throw 30 on the table. Uh, it's just, just be real about it. Lay the cards on the table. This idea of suggest, then select. Suggest, then select. That's how things happen, at least the way I share with it. So imagine you're sitting there as a group of developers, like here are the items that we've selected. Again, these are not tasks. Then it's, okay, here are the things that we feel good about. And there's actually not this, you know, contentious push. push. No, it's like, assume you're actually working from good faith. If developers has, have selected, say, six backlog items, everybody wants to get to tasks. We said, mm, write the sentence now. Now that we have the items that are in there, okay, let's go ahead and, and like, crystallize this objective. And for those of you who have ever seen, like, a, a blacksmith, who uh, is working on like a broadsword, like Game of Thrones. You know, they're like hitting, ding, ding, ding. 
Hey, you take it easy. Last you threw time Star you were the blacksmith, why get your sword shined? So it's interesting that you said you were going to be quiet while I'll explain <laughs> I my way. I'm you, sorry. you jump in. I I'm know sorry. it's your show, but what do you want from me, Dave? I'll be quiet. I don't think you can. Do you want to jump in now or no. do you want to wait? Okay. Okay. By the way, we are super good friends. You ever seen a blacksmith like dip their sword in like the big bucket of oil and it goes, Shh. you ever seen that? Dave, you ever seen that? The, it's I called the quench. Talk. What that sentence does is it crystallizes the sprint. It gives us a direction, an objective. This one month or less, here's the direction we're going. As long as we're tracking in that direction, that's a good thing. The entire scrum team collaborates on that statement. Writing that sentence, what's the reason we're coming together in this sprint? Suggest, select, then craft. And with the teams that I've worked with that have tried to figure this out, I say, if you can't write one sentence as a group, Pack it up. That's a draconian way of saying it. But really, if you have trouble writing a sentence, how are you going to go ahead and create something that's going to impact this world, move the needle in a positive way? So suggesting the items, product owner laser cards on the table. Developers select the items. Working together, hand in hand, we craft that sentence, that one statement, like, what's the reason we're coming together? Sprint goal from a team I used to work on. The reason we were coming together is because we were working on uh, some equipment that was really hard to read in low light conditions. That's why we're coming. We're trying to help people who are working in low light conditions. Can't get into the specifics. It's like, okay, now we have that. Now let's come up with our plan, our sufficiently detailed short range plan for the one month or less. And no one can tell developers how those items are going to get turned into increments of value. You can't have a product owner, a scrum master, a tech lead, or anybody saying, you should do this, you should do this. I'm not going to notice how you haven't heard me say anything about points, hours. I'm not even going there yet. You want to hear some more about that for me? My students know he's not going there. No, because we have some other stuff coming out for that later. Who owns the sprint backlog and these plan? Those are developers. That's the association to think of. If developers say this is a sufficient amount of detail for us, they good for them. That's awesome. As a scrum master, I want them to feel that it's their plan. The moment somebody back to echo Dave, as far as we don't assign things out, if people are thinking about, oh, this is a plan that we're coming up with as we're both identifying and then grabbing and accepting responsibility for things, they'll feel that they own it. Common question that shows up around this part, this, this third topic of how will this work get done? People often ask me, Chris, what if somebody doesn't want to do that task or there's an unfun task? <laughs> did the group come up with it or did your scrum master or tech lead write it down before things even happened because we started sprint planning before the event happened? Yes, you're welcome. Or do your backlog items look like technical tasks? Back to the assumptions, folks. So to recap from my standpoint, we do that basic sequence of suggest, select, craft. We try to do that, suggest the items, developers select the items, and then working together collaboratively, let's write one sentence that kind of crystallizes where we're going for this one month or less. Now that we got that, we got an objective, got the items, let's break it down and see what we want to do as far as from a from a implementation task standpoint. Small work items of one day or less is the way I like to talk about it. Hopefully when you leave sprint planning, you have an idea of what your sprint looks like. As a developer, I felt great when I walked out, like I know what my next week or month or however long it would be, how it would look. You have a product owner, kind of like what Dave said before. I've got something now that says this gives us the objective of this is the way we're tracking. If you learn stuff later on, again, what's the heart of empiricism? Inspect and adapt, but we got to have transparency and a shared understanding of things. If some items we learn something, we got to, hey, make some changes. That's cool. Is it still in the direction of that goal that we wrote? The challenge that people have is they try to write the sentence right out of the gate. If that's what you do, you probably know my pain on this one. Try to hold off on that. Try to go ahead and talk about the items a little bit, not at the implementation level, and go, okay, let's crystallize it with one sentence. Suggest, select, craft, then the plan. That's kind of, and I don't want to get into the whole how we come up with a plan. It's just that, that kind of sequence I wanted to talk about. If, if it's you know, capacity and this and this, I have a whole bunch of bag of tricks on that stuff, but that's, that's kind of the sequence that I really wanted to, wanted to highlight. That was, I, I really like that su su uh, suggest, select, and craft thing. Um, I want to check with you on two things here. Okay. Roger that. Okay. Um, do you have a problem with a PO that shows up with the sprint goal? Yes. 100%. Okay, why? If they the have that level of clarity. Oh, because you, you're worried they're going to impose it on the team. Right? 
Go ahead. You broke up. Just Are you worried they're going to try to impose their goal on the team without the team being part of the conversation? It's not the product owner's goal. It's the scrum team's goal. Okay. The I, whole I scrum team then collaborates to define yeah, a sprint yeah. goal that communicates why the sprint is valid to stakeholders. Here's the way I like to think of it, Dave. Imagine you take everybody on the scrum team, product owner, scrum master, doesn't matter. Put right. them in different corners of the building, kind of like if you get busted at the beach for making a little too much noise, and then the, the mall cop goes, where were you on Tuesday? Where right. were you on Tuesday? And you want the stories to match? I would want to hear the same type of, oh, this is what we're tracking towards this sure. month. Everybody, and if everybody has a hand in it, there you go. Common, okay. And this is this is a challenge that we'd run into because people are like, oh, the product owner, and this is the misconception of proposes how the product could increase its value. Yeah. Hey, if we added stickers to this, some real cool stuff can happen, but really it's on you guys. What should we, because mm -hmm. speaking frankly, like what the product owners that I'll run into, they come from kind of the cloth you and I grew up in where it's like we're used to just driving and saying this is what we need to do. Yeah. And, and so that that's why it's like I'm saying you, if you hear a sprint goal, that one sentence, writing it together. That sure. gives us direction and purpose for the one month or less. That's okay. that's why I say it that so, way. I get I get that. It's not how I do it, but I get it. And I Roger think that. I'm assuming that we're both pursuing the same thing, which is collective ownership of the goal, buy into the goal, Roger understanding that. about why the things are there. So even if we have different paths, um, hopefully people aren't listening from too dogmatic a standpoint. They understand that. Like, yeah, it, we're we're taking if we different own it together, roads to get to the same place. We, this is something that we all feel good at. The, the danger yeah. we have is kind of like the, it's one thing if you're, if you're going through the practice of, okay, everybody write a rough draft of something mm -hmm. and then let's look at the rough drafts and come up with the best ideas versus, hi, I'm your product owner. Here's the rough draft. Do you agree with it? And let's say that product owner signs everyone's yeah, time card and everyone goes, thing. okay. And so if you're listening to this, hey, I see you. I feel you. Like, I got you. <laughs> no, this is a, a student that I talked to. Okay. That, and, um, and, also, and also the who. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's on that one thing. That's why I'm a big fan of like craft is a, and I even show like everyone working on it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing that I've had, and I, I think you're going to want to do a spit take at this question as well, but um, well, I've had a lot of people say, so like they follow your, your guidance here, right? The PO shows up and asks, Hey, has like 12 things that the PO mm -hmm. is asking for. Mm -hmm. And if they've read, I think it was an older version of the Scrum Guide, the way it was written was the team selects from the product backlog what they will do in the sprint. Mm -hmm. Their fear was that the team would like totally blow off what the PO wanted and go pick other stuff from the product backlog that they wanted to do. And I'm always like, that's never going to happen. But if the PO doesn't have a goal, at the, if they have the goal at the outset, I think that that is less likely. Because if it is, I want to make sure we have all the stuff for an awesome birthday party then you're not going to pick like something that has nothing to do with that probably. Um, but I can also see where if there was like, you know, 30 things and then just having that conversation, like, well, why these 30 things? Well, this birthday party's coming up. It would be cool if we could get that sorted, but they would still have to negotiate that. And you really want that conversation, right? Absolutely. Okay. The, I get that. The suggest and then yeah. the select, because like, if, you know, if I'm a developer on a team, I want to feel, you know, if I've been sold a bill of goods that says I'm empowered, that I get to come up with a short range plan, that I get to pick what's in the sprint. Mm -hmm. But then if a product owner or some, you know, if someone's forcing something on me, it's like, all right, look, it's, it's just, it's, it's agile theater. Can we just, just tell me what you want? You know, you know, and yeah, I, this yeah. is, I just had a conversation about a month ago about this. Um, I hear, I hear you though. on like, it's funny about when people will pull out like the older versions of things like that. And yeah. it's like, I keep them all like right handy in case like, well, actually it was this. And when I taught it like this and it's just like, you're, you're totally like you are, you are out, you are outmanned and outgunned like that. That's not a good place to go though. The, if the one that I'm talking, and I don't want to go grab it. It's on the other side of the room. Um, but that was operating the way I used to talk about that was that it was operating from a standpoint of product owners. Again, yeah. one, everybody is operating from a place of good faith. Part one. Yeah. Part two, product owners have spent adequate time in conversations, in backlog refinement, right. that everyone is on the same page. But most importantly, that the product owner on the most up-to-date information has ordered those items appropriately based on what they knew. So if people were pulling off the top, which is what, you know, most people would take away from it, right. then, hey, the most important stuff is at the top. I'm a big fan of the whole suggest because it's like, here's like a starting point. Yeah. If we can see that a lot of this stuff is about a birthday party or you know, whatever. It's like, okay, we can have that conversation where the goal yeah. is like through suggest and select, we're trying to craft that sentence. And if we all feel good about, oh, and by the way, for those of you listening out there, 
from a percentage standpoint, if you have 100% of your time, whatever you set aside for sprint planning, uh, we normally would spend about, say, 30% of our time on suggest and select, 20% of the time on craft, just 20%, just on that sentence. And then the back half of it was developers coming up with, oh, this is a, this is a work item. Okay, we need to do this, sure. how we need to install. So it was like kind of like the front half was the negotiation and writing that sentence. Yeah. And you can shade it shorter, <clears throat> but so many people just want to get into um, just who's going to do what, install, you know, do, do this, it, yeah. do this. And I mean, and just to bring it back to the real stuff, and I'll throw it back, it was like, think about individuals and interactions over processes and tools. If you're in sprint planning and you find that you're all huddled around one laptop while one scrum master's key and a whole bunch of subtasks in the JIRA that they've already written down and copying over from a spreadsheet because an architect already filled it out, I see you and I feel you. And that's what Dave and I are trying to help with. Um, and I'm done. Okay. <laughs> and I'm done. I think it's also, I hadn't, there's something I hadn't thought about before until you were just talking, which was, hmm. um, Pardon me for even if the even even if the PO came in without a defined goal, yeah, you can they kind of idea what they want. It. You can infer it from the things they're offering or asking. Yeah. For. but also they would have gone through this stuff in backlog refinement. They probably also would have talked about what they were kind of aiming at during the yeah. sprint review with the stakeholders. So it's not like it's yeah. suddenly dropped on them. No, it's, um, it's it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, yeah. I mean, if if you know, I know we're going tangentially, but it's like. But the whole scrum team is there and they're having conversations. And I mean, shoot, there's some teams that say, Hey, or product owners I, I talk with where they're trying to kind of bridge that gap between developers, you know, everyone and the people who are, are, are consuming that work and, and their lives are impacted where it's like, Oh, suddenly every, if everyone's more human, okay. They know that that's like the pain and it's not like a surprise. Yeah. It's like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, it, it's, if you feel surprised in sprint planning, the lever to pull there, folks, that's your time and refinement. different lever. Yeah. Okay. That's your thing. So sorry to. No, this is good. I mean, do you? I feel like we got where I wanted us to get to with this meeting. Did we get where you wanted to get to? Oh, I'm loving this. That was part. What you said that there were two things because we talked about the goal, and you said there was a second thing. Well, there was another thing I wanted to ask you about. I'm gonna. I would like to provide you with an opportunity to spit into the camera in anger. Spit, spit but, into the camera in anger. Oh. Uh, I'm as just going to play take the away part my of a student Jesus. now, and I'm going to offer you up this, oh, no. oh, don't do lob that. this ball up there for you. <laughs> all right. But lob in my ball. sprint planning meeting, that's when we estimate all our backlog items for the sprint. Okay. So I'll, I'll throw that, and I'll throw another one I heard last week, that uh, in sprint planning, that's where the product owner uses Moscow to prioritize the team's work for the sprint. Okay. So what do you have to say to those two things? Well, back to one thing, and then I'll reiterate on it. Part of the rules of the road, T's and C's, uh, trade tables up and everything like that, was understanding the fundamental differences between sprint planning and backlog refinement. Okay. Backlog refinement is a continuous act. It's not a one-time shot. Right. But focusing on three areas. It's where we work together as a scrum team, all focused on getting mutual understandings on individual product backlog items, okay. where we had details, ordering, and sizing information. For those yeah. of you who've worked with me for a long time, you remember it used to be estimates. That word estimates has been removed from the Scrum Guide and has been replaced by the word sizing. So all your activities, oh, we're comparing items one and another relatively, you know, planning for, for my fans out there, don't worry, same bucket, different bucket. That's going to be on tape real soon. And I'll go ahead and plug that at the end of the, the end of the video. <laughs> but all the activities of let's go ahead and like polish up these items like, oh, yeah. there's this. Oh, OK. Let's uh, compare them relatively, figure out which is bigger, which is smaller. That what's the order of those things. Right. That happens in backlog refinement and not in sprint planning. Full stop on that. So if you find yourself going into sprint planning and you're doing all those things, those activities are not happening in the pro in the proper space. Hmm. Factually incorrect. You need to know where the lines are. Cause like, like kind of like what you said, Dave, it's like a student says, we do this. What do you think about that? Well, those are the same kind of environments where people say, oh, we invite our stakeholders into our yeah, retrospective the retrospective. <laughs> because the review and the retrospective, it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same scenario I hear. We like to like, play with matches and gasoline. But why not just, why are people, this is, and this is the upsetting part and really the heartbreaking part. It's like, I can show you where the lines are. And people are like, oh, well, let's go ahead and get away from the basics. And the basics is what saves you. Yeah. And it's like, if these lines start to get fuzzy, this is how the nine o'clock meeting looks like the 10 o'clock meeting. And it looks like the 11 o'clock meeting yeah. where the same group of people is talking about two or three things. And you're like, I hate this scrum stuff. I would too. Yep. Frankly, 
So back to the original question on it, the activities, they're valid. They are happening in the improper place. Okay. Now, what about the product owner prioritizing the work in the sprint backlog for the team using Moscow or any other practice? It's out. It's not their sprint ba product backlog, product owner, sprint backlog, developers go away. <sighs> I and thought I was the reason, get you fired up on that one. No, no. It, but the reason that is, is that remember, at the end of the day, what is the sprint backlog? It's a short range, sufficiently detailed plan to create a collective work product called an increment. It's yeah. not, oh, we need to know that Tom needs these five tickets done. Eh. Sorry. He, he does this on purpose, folks. For everyone who's like, I know what he's going to do. I knew it was no, it's, it's, You don't prioritize the items in the sprint back. No, that's nothing to do with a product, product owner at all. Nothing at all. All right. Thank you. No, it's, is that more ammo for you? This was great. No, I appreciate well, you doing this. Um, before yes. we adjourn, I would like to offer you an opportunity to once again tell these people about Spark Blog and tell them where to send you all the digital copies of all the Rush albums they can find. Oh <laughs> Chris uh, loves Rush. I, I love Rush so much that I forward all of that mail right to Dave Breyer. Uh, my, <laughs> again, if you're still with us, thank you for listening. And if you ever get a chance to see Dave and I in the same place, <laughs> by all means, come say hi and give Dave a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. So that in mind, uh, you <laughs> can Guinness. find me. That would be Guinness. great. <laughs> That'll go great. Uh, if you uh, if you want to go ahead and reach out and find find me, uh, I'm very active on LinkedIn and on Twitter. Uh, you'll find me on Twitter at realchrislee.com. And by the way, it's L I, not L E E. Um, I, I love hearing from from current and potential and former students. It's, it's the best. I love talking with folks. Uh, you can check out our website, and that's sparkplugagility.com. One word: sparkplugagility. Uh, and you can send us notes through there. Uh, reach out to me. My team, we love talking to folks. If you are an inspiring instructor, like you're just starting things off, you got to build a couple brown bags and all, uh, we'd love to talk to you. Um, that's kind of where our big focus is moving forward, trying to help uh, instructors, both aspiring, practicing, and advancing, help them kind of up their game in whatever. It doesn't have to be agility. That, that's where a lot of our work is going to right now and what we're the most passionate about. Um, talk, talking about Scrum and, and with people as smart as Dave uh, puts a lot of wind in our sails and and we're lucky and fortunate enough to have those conversations with people to try to at least give them as much of ourselves as we can to try to hear something that you can get started and kind of show those lines of where the basics are. And when we are passionate about that too. So uh, if you love to see us work, we love to work with you. So cool. give me a note. Thank you. And you can find all his classes and all my classes on the scrum or our scrum classes, scrum mm -hmm. lines website as well. So um, dude, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate all you right. being here and thank you all for listening. And remember, send him all your Rush albums. Just as long as you send Dave Dragon Force. That's an <laughs> oh, yeah. Trade. Thank you. <laughs>